Hello, welcome to another One Minute Monday, although I'm going to be honest, this is not going to be one minute. It's going to be more like five minutes probably. But, so what I'm going to be doing is, um, we're looking at a method for multiplying numbers together, sort of large-ish, like two digit numbers. Um, so it's really useful for that. So I've got a specific method for that, but actually it's also a really useful sort of general concept um, that you can use in lots of other areas in math. So there is a little one minute bit, but it's inside a, a, a larger thing, okay? Right, so, uh, oh, before we start, you need to be able to, well, very often with this method, we're gonna be doubling numbers. So if you're not already confident with doubling numbers, you can watch my video on doubling numbers, that will help you. Um, similarly, you need to, often you'll need to be able to multiply numbers by five using this method. So. Um, if you can't do that, again, I've got a video on that, so you can check that out. Um, I'll put a link up here, and I'll put a link in the description below as well. Um, right, the main idea behind this method is that when you're... Actually, there are two key ideas. First one is if you're multiplying two numbers together, or even three numbers together, it doesn't matter the order in which you multiply those numbers. So 5 times 3 is 15, and 3 times 5 is 15 as well, okay? It doesn't matter which order. And that's true even if it's three digits or four digits, uh, sorry, three numbers or four numbers. Um, it doesn't matter the order that you multiply those numbers in, okay? So that's that's the first thing. Um, <laughs> uh, what was the second thing? The second thing is, uh, I've forgotten. Anyway, let, I'll start off with an example and that, that will illustrate the whole thing. So let's say I want to do 18 times 7, okay? I'm going to break the 18 down into factors. In other words, I'm going to think of a pair of numbers that multiply to 18. In this case, I'm going to go with 9 times 2. So 18 is the same as 9 times 2. And I'm going to do 9 times 2 times 7, okay? Then I'm going to use this idea of rearranging. So I'm going to put the 2 at the end. I'm going to do 9 times 7 times 2 and I'm doing that because I know how to do 9 times 7 you know because I'm amazing at my times tables so 9 times 7 is 63 then I'm going to times it by 2 I'm going to double it because I know how to double numbers as well so both of those steps are quite easy for me so 63 times 2 I'm going to double 60 which is 120 and I'm going to double the 3 which is 6 so uh, 63 times 2 is 126 okay so th th this idea is that you get your number and you break it down into two numbers that multiply together. Now, the, when you do that, you want one of those numbers to be something that you can multiply easily by, okay? So I can easily multiply numbers by two, okay? I know how to double numbers really easily. I can easily multiply numbers by four, because you just double and then double again. So that's really good. I can easily multiply numbers by five because of the amazing multiplying by five method. Um, and I can easily multiply numbers by 10. So I'm trying to break these numbers down into factors where they've either got a two, a four, a five, or a 10, okay? Let's do another example. Let's say I want to do 24 times eight, okay? I'm gonna break that 24 down into two times 12. So I'm doing two times 12 times 8. Okay, and I'm going to rearrange it all. I'm going to do 12 times 8, because again, I know my time saver, so I know that that's 96, and then I just got to double that. So if I double 90, that's 180. If I double 6, that's 12. Um, so 96 times 2 is 192. Okay, I'll do one more example. Let's do one where we've got uh, two sort of large-ish numbers. Let's do 36 times 15. Well, 36 is the same as nine times four, okay? That's a good pair to choose because I can easily multiply numbers by four. And 15, I can break down into three times five. That's a good one to choose because I can easily multiply numbers by five. Okay, so we've got, um, uh, hang on, so, right, well, actually, this is, <laughs> probably you need to be able to write these ones down because it can be difficult to memorize them in your head. So. What did I have? I've got 36, which is nine times four, and I've got 15, which is three times five, and I'm gonna rearrange those numbers. Uh, so, actually, there's lots of different ways I could rearrange them, but I'm gonna do uh, nine times three, 
which is 27, and then I'm going to put the 4 and the 5 together. So 4 times 5 is 20. And I've done it like that because it's easy to multiply numbers by 20. You double it, and then you times it by 10. Okay. So 9 times 3 is 27. 27 times 20. I double it, I get 54. Times it by 10, I get 540. So 36 times 15 is 540. That might have seemed quite long-winded and sort of, but you know that's partly because I was having to keep all this stuff in my head, which you know can be difficult. Uh, had I been able to just write that down in front of me, I could have done that really quickly. Um, so that idea of being able to break numbers down into their factors, that's really useful in lots of areas of maths. You know when we're sort of factorising um, algebraic expressions and things like that. And the idea that when you're multiplying, you can rearrange, that's also really useful in other areas of maths as well. Okay, so those are super useful in lots of areas of maths. I'm using it for this specific method today, which is to multiply numbers together. Um, I hope you found it useful. Um, go away and have a practice on your own if you want to get good at it. Um, and I think that's everything. I will see you next week on another One Minute Monday. Thank you for watching.